Welcome to the Gen and Julian podcast. Post Christmas. Post Christmas. We talk about the Gen and Julian things amongst the other things, and it's New Year's this week. Yeah. This podcast is not brought to you by New Year's. That's going to happen regardless. This podcast is brought to you by Bolt and Branch. Seriously, some of the best bedding you can buy ever. Uh, go to Bull and Branch. That's B O L L and Branch dot com and enter product code Jenna Julian for twenty percent off your entire order of uh, bedding, anything like that. They have towels, duvets. But seriously, we're sleeping on it right now. It's it's the best of all of it. Uh, this podcast is also also brought to you by Headspace. Start training your mind today with Headspace. Guided meditation in the app store. You can get uh, the app right now for free, or go to headspace.com slash Jenna Julian to get started uh, and try the try the 10 day fr- uh, free meditation program. You go 10 days, it's a challenge actually. They want you to meditate for 10 days straight and see if you can do it and see how you like it. And it's all 100% free for the 10 days. Uh, thank you to our sponsors. That's so dope. It's really dope. That's so dope. That's a new sponsor, by the way, Headspace. We'll talk about that later. So try it out, it's incredible. Damn, dude. It's really fucking sick. Anyways. Anyways. Man, Thank I could you. use some headspace right now. I feel you, dude. I mean, <laughs> I I try to meditate sometimes, but there's always like a dog jumping on me that makes it weird. So not to not to hop right into the sponsors, but I'll they close actually close the door and do that. They account for that. They give you what? ways to meditate with surrounding noise and things Damn, like that. Damn, so you got to try it. I haven't tried it yet. Fuck. Guided meditation. It's pretty dope. Pretty That's dope. Sick. Pretty fucking dope. Pretty dope. Pretty dope. Uh, so we hope all of you had a, a good Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Did that pass, Kwanzaa? I actually don't really know when it is. Well, whatever led up to New Year for I know you, it's a winter holiday. It's around in there somewhere. We hope you had a good one yeah. of it. Uh, we are actually recording this in advance right now, just to be transparent. We are leaving uh, to visit Jenna's family uh, for Christmas. So it's currently before Christmas right now, but we're yeah. recording this a week ahead of time just so we can uh, not have to record from a hotel room, which I don't even know if it would be possible right now. It gets weird when you have to it do it. Weird. We've done that once in, in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, it gets weird. But you know what? That was before we were shooting on a good camera. Yeah, I think. we were using a terrible camera and terrible mics. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. There was definitely the terrible mics. It might have been either that camera. or we shot it on a camera and said, "Hey, we'll be back." In no, like, like we literally. Yeah. <laughs> no, we did. You have, like, it only records for. 15 it only minutes, records for like. So you have yeah. to let it shut off and then pick up where. And you so left then off. I had to go in later and in post and yeah. sync up all the audio. It was just wow. We, we and we're, we're in Vegas. We're, we're trying to. We're crushing it. <laughs> so we're we, there for work. <laughs> we're there for work. But um, yeah, we won't be doing that. We wanted to record beforehand. Uh, but we had an idea to talk about for the podcast today. Yeah. It was it was kind of we wanted to have like a discussion sort of thing, but lighthearted. And this is what we came up with. You want to? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about making it a vlog on my vlog channel. Um, but I said I think it would be funnier if we did it together. It's not meant to be funny, but I think it would be more interesting if we had us together. You as a guy, me as a girl, us as a couple, like what your best and worst worst purchases were in the past. I think it's a it's a good contrast. It is. Well, I feel like we could still do that as a couple. It's a separate thing. Oh, as a couple, the worst things, like the, the things, best things we've, we've bought, collectively bought together. Right? Because there have been some. Yeah. Yeah. But for this podcast, we basically took some time before coming in here and and wrote down individually what some of our best and worst purchases that we could think of yeah. of our entire life. And were. I was like, Julian, most of mine are like beauty products. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I Sorry. can't relate to that. Sorry. But, uh, but I, I, didn't, have my, I, I have my own kind of weird shit that I yeah. you know, bought and failed. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, well, go ahead. No, I just feel like I was thinking of a list and I feel like there's a couple that are just getting away from me. It's I know. bothering me. Anyway, sorry, what? Um, I feel like if I made this a vlog, I didn't want it to come across as like me bashing companies or products. I know. It's or, very easy to get that way with this. Yeah. Or, or when you talk about good products, it's very easy to sound like you're just promoting them. Yeah. I know. Uh, but in, in all transparency all transparency and fairness, none of these are sponsored, nor do we like hate any of these No, none of these or, brands are part of this. Yeah. And uh, our only sponsors are Headspace. And Bowling Bowling Branch, Branch. which both of you should check out right now. (laughs) Headspace, you can check out right from your phone. You get the app. It's awesome. Um, So how do you want to do this? Do you want to Let's go through our worst ones first. Okay. You want to alternate each one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Why don't you go ahead first? All right. The first worst thing that I bought was not like a – it wasn't a small purchase. It was expensive at the time. Yeah. It was like fucking $200. Okay. And it was back, I want to say, like maybe four years ago or more when uh, Sephora and everybody was really 
um, pumping out this temp to airbrush makeup thing. Okay. You, you've been in Sephora, Julian. You like, so you love Sephora. Well, I'm just kidding. Love's a strong it's word. It's like Julian's prison because <laughs> he knows I'm just going to stay in there and dilly dally. But you know, when you walk in Sephora and they have like all the products, the new products or like whatever they're really pushing, will have like a display in the front. Like they really want you to buy it. Yes. So at the time it was this temp to airbrush makeup thing, which is, you know what an airbrush it's not a, like an actual airbrush. Yeah, right? it's like a little. It's a little like oh, it's an box actual, oh, okay. with a little like airbrush thing, and like you can use really good ones. Like makeup artists will use yeah. really good ones where you like can just dump in like actual foundation, different colors to like mix something. Like makeup artists think of uh, Face Off when they yeah, use yeah, an okay, so like a mini airbrush. Yeah, but it was like commercialized, and for, you take like, it home. It's for you. Yeah, you yeah. buy it. So. Okay. It's, but it's for like, you know, amateurs that don't know how to mix their got own it, paint and foundations. For sure. <laughs> and it's not nearly as expensive as like a professional one. Yeah, it yeah. was like a, you know, a, a mass product for, you know, just your average okay, person. Okay, for sure, for sure. And it was called Tempto and it was the first model because I, I don't want to talk about the newer I think there's newer models, but it was the first model. And so I, of course, like... Every girl was like, oh, this looks fucking dope, man. Like, I really rage. want yeah. this. This is, this is dope. Yeah. And I have to say, I bought it and you buy these little pods. So you buy the foundation in a pod, but you can't like test it on yourself really because you have to plug it into the airbrush machine and like whatever. So I got a couple of different shades okay. to, to like match my foundation. Yeah. And I have to say, I fucking loved it for like a month or two okay. because like, you know, when you have fake tan on, like you might need a darker yeah. shade, like whatever. So I was able to adjust it and it was really nice. It feels like a, like a beautiful moist breeze mm -hmm. coming at you and yeah. then boom, your foundation is done and got you it. can click in a little bronzer. You so can in click theory, in a little it's blush. genius. Of course. Yeah. Okay. But after a little while, the hose, like on it, the hose that connected from the box to the sprayer, yeah. it just fucking like broke. Oh, and all the little pods that I was buying, <laughs> yeah. like I would shake them and they're like, oh, if it gets clogged or whatever, just wipe around it. And I would wipe around it and then they would just <laughs> spit foundation all over my face, like. <laughs> And now I'm covered in like blotches of foundation that you can't really then, get off that easily. Well, then you have to go in there and like blend oh, them. Geez. So what's the point of that? If I have to go in here and blend it, then I'll just use my yeah. liquid or powder or yeah. cream foundation. Why? Yeah. Do, why am I spraying shit oh, all God. over my face like a spray paint gun? Yeah. And then it finally just like sort of disconnected, and I couldn't even get it to work. But I had already bought like all the makeup pods for it, and I'm like, well, great. Now these are just a waste of fucking money. That's really brutal. And, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, no, it was so upsetting. Because I loved it. It's like you don't have to use your brushes. Like your hands aren't touching your face. It's just such a roller coaster of emotions. You're like, you exactly. get it. You're like, this is going to change the game. And then it just completely just backfires and everything gets fucked. Well, the worst was that I fell in love with it. Yeah. And then it fucked me. That's what me. I'm saying. Yeah. It wasn't just a bad product from the get go. It fucked me, man. Fucked you, man. Fucked with fucked your shit. Me. And then the, I think what was even more hurtful than that is that all of a sudden t Sephora just like it wasn't in there anymore. They but. just said, oh, uh, yeah, we were wrong, but we're not going to like tell anyone. Like, Yo, buy this. It's going to change your life. Two months later, psych everybody. Buy this one now. And I was like, I just got played. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm so sorry. That's my first it sounds one. like a rough Thanks. Call. It's OK. I'm all right. I'm so You good? Yeah. You need to talk about it? We'll talk about it later. Yeah. OK. I'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, okay, so my first one, uh, as you guys know, I grew up playing baseball since I was very, very young, all through, all throughout the beginning of college. Uh, and there was a point in playing baseball where you are getting ready for high school baseball, but you're still playing like travel baseball. So basically, like, you're playing in two different leagues or sort of simultaneously playing in two different leagues. And the two different leagues have different rules. So one, you know, one league has 90 foot bases, one league I has 80 relate. foot bases, yep. you know, so you're, you're going back and forth and it's, you know, the equipment is right. different. Metal like, bats, metal bats, bats, big barrel bats to wow. small barrel bats. Yeah. So, uh, they came out because they, you know, they feel, you know, a lot of companies, baseball brands were figuring a lot of kids were in this transition period where basically in high school ball, you can use metal cleats. But in travel ball, you, can't. you couldn't necessarily always use metal cleats. Right. So they figured, you know, instead of selling two pairs of cleats to each kid, let's make these cleats interchangeable. So you literally include <laughs> uh, a little screwdriver and you you each cleat on the bottom of your shoe, you're unscrewing before each game and screwing in the metal or the plastic ones whatever fit for that game or league. And I never, ever played, except for maybe the first time I wore them, a game 
where every cleat was in there. There was always one fucking missing in my bag or it had fallen out because you're, a, I don't know, a 15 year old kid trying to screw drive your cleats while your teammates are yelling at you to go get ready and stretch. And you're just Man. like, fuck, I'm, I'm building cleats right now. Sorry, one sec. So, uh, by the end of the, the, you know, its lifespan, it was like a sad, pathetic, like half cleat with maybe three spikes on it. The rest were gone. There was like screws all over my bag. There was this shitty little, screwdriver that was always in my way. Uh, that was, that was horrible. That, that was sucks. horrible because in theory you're like, yeah, That's, let's, well, let's, yeah, it sounds like a great plan, Yeah, but it never, ever worked out. And it, it always came to the point where I was either losing cleats or, you know, sometimes they would fall off mid game, which was the worst because you would feel <laughs> them pop the point off. Of the cleat. <laughs> You'd feel them pop. Right. Right. Imagine oh. like you're, you're getting set in the box and you feel no. like, Oh, click. One of my cleats fell off. What are you thinking about that? And then you strike out and you're like, thanks a lot like Mizuno or whatever the fuck. I don't even remember what brand it was. That's funny you say that because in my best purchases, I actually wrote a, a something not like that, similar, but similar sports. You know, and that's one of those things like in theory, it's a very, very smart thing. And you're like, this is going to change my life. But right. then, and then, so you have the cleats, right? They're shit. They break all the time. But then six months later, you're never using plastic cleats ever. So you're like, <laughs> why the fuck did I, I had no foresight. Like I just, yeah. yeah that we was, didn't, I think in my high school, we were, we only had plastic cleats and we weren't allowed to use metal until college uh, because they, they baby us little delicate girl flowers, yeah. you know? Yeah. Baseball and softball have weird differences like that. They do. Yeah. But I just remember the first day I put on a pair of metal cleats and was like, my life is forever Oh changed. my God. Metal cleats are the best yeah. comparatively. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, you want to keep going? Yes. Yeah. That sounds terrible. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Thank you. That makes me want to cry. RIP all those little cleats falling around my bag. <laughs> Horrible. All right. My next worst purchase was along the lines of the the temp to airbrush. Okay. So makeup. Yeah. Okay. So you remember during a period on YouTube when no one really knew uh, if beauty bloggers or vloggers or whatever were being sponsored yeah, yeah, because they didn't really have to disclose it. And, you know, they. It was like a weird time. Yeah. It was a weird time. It was around. It was a few years ago. But. You would start to notice as a person that likes watching beauty gurus or whatever, that everybody all at once would be like hawking you the same product. And you're like, okay, something's up, something's going on here and I don't like it, (laughs) but I realized that I recognize that and I still fell for it and I feel stupid. So again, not a fucking cheap purchase. It was like a hundred dollars and it was one of those oscillating like little face brushes. Yeah, I've seen a billion of those. God, It was like, you know, I don't know. Like the ones on the infomercials. Right. So, well, those are cheap. Those are what? Like you can buy them for like $10. Three payments of $10. No, I think they're like $10 (laughs) now or free. People are literally just trying to get rid of them. Yeah. But they were expensive when they first came out and everybody was hawking them at you like, oh, this changed my life. It changed my face. And, you know, maybe for some people it did. Maybe some people still use theirs. Yeah. But I just remember like putting my soap on there, using it a couple times and being like, all right, this is nice. And then I sat with the sad reality that was, am I going to use this powered oscillating brush on my face for the rest of my life? (laughs) Really, Jenna? Like, is this what my life has become now? Really? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) just got so duped yeah like the time that i was really into using latisse and i was like oh this is really cool and then i had this sad honest conversation with myself like you really bitch you're gonna put this on your eyelashes every day for the rest of your life no those realizations are always so funny because like looking into a purchase you have these like the short-minded like i need this so badly right now if i had that then maybe everything would just be a lot better and no it wasn't i got played brutal Brutal. I would like to know in the comments, though, if you still have one of those oscillating face brushes. Yeah, answer that, but also list some of your worst purchases. Yeah, please. Um, in college, I, I'm i not going to say the name of this brand, okay. but in college, I was... You know, I was relatively decent friends with one of this, this, these kids who started an underwear company. Um, obviously, my allegiance is to me on these now. Everyone knows <laughs> that. But... Yeah, it was what, you know, in college, you have like friends, you make friends in a way like you're, you sit together in two out of the three same, you know, lectures yeah. or something. And you just over the course of the semester, you just become like class friends with them. You text them about homework and shit like that. Maybe get lunch every once in a while. So that I had a friend like that. Um, and he started an underwear company and 
you know, I knew about it because I followed him on social media and I saw he was always working with it and shit like that. And then, you know, I graduated and we part ways, you know, not that good of a friend, so we don't talk too much. But like literally recently, um, I was, you know, it's, it popped up again in my feed somehow. Some of my, one of my old friends posted about it. I was like, oh, they're doing really well. Like this company seems to be like succeeding. They've built a following. They have decent marketing and like the underwear looks dope. Right. So let's, let's try a pair. And this is like really overpriced underwear. I don't know why I did it. It was like 30 or 40 bucks for a pair of for underwear. A pair? Yeah. It was pretty dumb. That hurts my heart. Yeah. But I mean, obviously I didn't buy it in college cause I, there's no way I could have done yeah. that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I bought a pair and I was like, yeah, I mean, this will be cool because if it works out, I'll send him a message be like, hey, great job. I just tried your product finally. And I bought it and I washed it once and it ripped from a wash. Like the seam from the waistband, just it was like there was a hole and that nothing had happened. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, fuck. This is crap. Boxers or boxer briefs? Briefs. They're briefs. What? Um, And it's just one of those things when I was like, all that, like I had seen thousands of Instagram posts from them from throughout years of following people who were doing different things. And then I was like, you know what? Let's give it a try. Rip Man. on the first wash. That sucks. I'm not going to say the name. That'd be mean. But that's, yeah. That's just terrible. It's just like, there's I don't nothing understand worse how than, you build a product that just... Well, there's nothing worse than buying a clothing item that's over $5 that falls oh, apart dude. in the wash. Oh, dude. If it's under $5 and you're like, all right, yeah, I bought this for $3, fine. It fell apart in the wash. I'm okay. Um, life goes on. But $30 yeah. is a lot to fall apart in the wash. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I, it was it was just one of those things that was like difficult to like comprehend why that happened. Underwear, too, to me, is just like so wonderful that – when you're looking forward to having a pair of underwear and it's comfortable and you like it and then it falls apart, you're like, well, fuck. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> Should we, you want to go on my next yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. That's just my old, that's the sad story of I'm my I'm sorry. Underwear. It makes me feel bad. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> uh, my next bad one is uh, Bumble and Bumble dry shampoo, dry hair shampoo, like dry shampoo. Okay. You know how much I love my dry shampoo. Yes. It's what I live on. Yeah. So that my hair color doesn't look like shit all the time and my hair doesn't fall out of my head by washing it all the time. But this was when uh, my hair was like a between a blonde and a brunette color. It was sort of both. And uh, I usually buy, if I can, I'll buy a dry shampoo or a product at the salon because, you know, it helps them. Yeah, I just actually learned that recently. Yeah, and they also, you know, can give you a good recommendation. Yeah. About what to use on your hair. Yeah. And I'm willing to pay a little bit more for a better product rather than a cheapo product sure, that's yeah. really going to fuck my life up. Although I enjoy cheap things. You just have to hunt for them. Yeah. There's yeah. more trial and error. Um, so I bought this Bumble and Bumble dry shampoo, which came in like three colors. It came in like a, a white or a platinum blonde, a blonde and a brunette. So I got the blonde. She was like, yeah, here you go. This one, this one will be fine. It'll so be it blends in with your hair color? I guess because I've only because dry shampoos typically don't have color, right? Or okay. if anything, it may be white. Like, and then you brush it out, Got and you're not it. supposed okay. to be able to see it. But it's not part of the product. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I'll, I have read that you can get colored dry shampoos if you had like a bright red that you can get a red dry okay. shampoo. I had. Yeah. I I've never gotten that far. I've always just used like white or not. Color. Yeah. And so I brought this blonde dry shampoo home and sprayed it on my roots like when my hair got dirty and this motherfucker was brown like my whole head was brown like all around my face was brown like everything was fucking like this dark nasty brown that no one's hair color was oh my god and it was just terrible and there's other products too where like if your roots are coming in you can put like a powder over it to make it look oh my god those are the worst terrible it just seems so counterintuitive like if someone wanted to color their hair they would find means that already exist for that why would you try to throw that into a product that you're selling that's different try shampoo you're shampooing it dry yeah i mean i think that they just they're going for making it look like two and one your hair what like two and one yeah well yeah or just you know freshening up your color when it looks dirty or whatever yeah was so awful and i wish that this fucking girl had told me she was like oh here just that's great and i'm like all right oh, yeah there's nothing worth it, worse blonde. than when someone just like completely vouches for a shit product yeah yeah well i'm sure it's a fine dry shampoo and i haven't checked back with their line of dry shampoos because i you know me if, even if a dry shampoo sucks i will use that you, whole fucking yeah, bottle you use dry shampoo. uh-uh 
that thing had a date with the garbage and went straight into it. That's crazy. I was man. so mad. I had to wash my hair again, which defeats the point of dry shampoo. I would be pissed. I would be fucking pissed. Right? Yeah. Although you know what is a great purchase though, because we're not we're not getting there yet. Glitter hairspray. Because when I was a go go dancer, we'd use that instead of body glitter. If you just stand in front of your friend and glitter spray each other, that's a good product. Though. It's incredible. Uh, well, it's an incredible use for you it. You know, I'll look into that. I feel like I could use a little touch of glitter. If you <laughs> if you ever want to, I'm dead serious though. Like if you ever want to be covered in glitter, don't yeah. get like a lotion or like a something like that. Get glitter hairspray and then have somebody spray you with it or spray it on yourself. Okay, ten times better. Uh, noted. I'm actually gonna write that in my notes later. <laughs> Uh, this, my next one is very recent, actually. Um, I, I, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm eating healthy and I'm doing good with my diet, I eat a lot of chicken, like a lot of chicken. I know. We know. Uh, and you know, <laughs> it's, it's easy sometimes to cook it in bulk. And the best way to do that is on our grill. So, uh, you know, for, I don't like to use like Pam and stuff like that, like that artificial spray to, you know, smooth out a surface to cook on. I, I hated that stuff. So I would normally just like suck it up and put the chicken on the grill and then have to scrape the, you know, the stuff that stuck off of the bottom. But then we were at a store together and I saw this thing that was like, it's your own spray canister that you put your, you put your own oil in, your olive oil or whatever. And then you, you turn it and you pump it. Is this bought recently yes oh god. really it sucks oh my god so you pour the oil in you put the top on apparently you have to like pump it a couple times and then you tighten it and then it's a spray can with whatever oil you put in nope not at all so i poured like a whole shit ton of oil like we had just got a new bottle of oil and i poured like a good third of it in this thing and i'm like spraying it and nothing's coming out nothing at all so i'm like okay maybe i did it wrong and then i'm like oh maybe it pumps because it has this pump action so i'm pumping it like three or four or five 15 times and then i'm like oh okay it feels a little different like it feels like it's spring loaded now so i spray it and then it just drizzles out all over my hand oh. all over the outside of the like the metallic case of it so not only did it not work but now my whole hand is covered in olive oil and this like thing is covered in olive oil mm. so i had to wash it off and we still fucking have it i just haven't gotten rid of it it's the worst mm. thing it's just so dysfunctional i'm sorry no it's fine i didn't even think of kitchen gadgets i bought remember when i bought that julienne slicer the like manual one yeah. where you like jam a zucchini in yeah, it and yeah. then twirl the little pot around and it just like i wanted to cry because yeah. all i wanted was like zucchini I spaghetti know. so bad oh man bad kitchen items are bad just kitchen items are really heartbreaking the worst. i'm sorry that didn't work no it's okay it's just like i know out there i'm sure there's better ones no yeah even if i have to get just like an empty like windex bottle and then yeah. put olive oil in that fuck it like why not do that you know the the rose water toner that yeah. I love so much. I bought an out. I bought an, like a bottle I like that. Two like a, of those yeah. recently, though, and this the, the same thing though. The spray bottle, like the actual thing. I tried wiping it, like you know, it just stick it. It bleeds. No, it. It, instead of misting and like spraying, oh, yeah. it just shoots like yeah. a concentrated but it doesn't have that adjustment of water because it's flat. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. I feel like a little puppy or like a cat, <laughs> like trying to get off the table, like spraying myself in the face. Oh my it's, god! Defeats the point of having it. So. Fucky spray bottles are probably the worst. That sucks, dude. It's so frustrating. I'm sorry. I'm sure you were all hyped up, too, to, like, cook with your coconut oil in a spray. Well, it's just, like, so frustrating in the sense that, like, you're, like, you're really frustrated that you bought that product. And, like, I don't know, like, right now, like, I'm talking about it and I'm frustrated. And, getting angry. and like, you guys think about any problem you have in life. Yeah. It always starts in your head with, like, frustration and anger and stress and sadness. It all starts in your head. All of the emotions begin in your head. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you download the new Headspace app, <laughs> Whoa. go to headspace.com slash Jenna Julian right now to get started in training your mind. What is Headspace, you might ask? It's meditation made simple. It's so you can meditate and you don't need to go to yoga. You don't need to pay money, you know, all sorts of crazy money for yoga classes or get dressed up. You can do it from the power of your own phone. Literally anywhere you are, anytime, they're something called Take 10, where you meditate 10 minutes out of the day, and uh, you can do it for 10 days, and it's free. But basically, you do it from your phone. You plug in your headphones. You can go into the restroom at work. It doesn't even matter. You can meditate from anywhere. And the thing about meditation is thousands and thousands of years of tradition and scientific research have gone into meditation, and it has been proven through years and years of both of those things that meditation works. It helps focus, it helps your feelings and your relationships, and it also helps decrease stress. So right now, start training your mind by going to headspace.com slash Jenna Julian. Get the app, give it a try, do the Take 10, which is an absolutely free way to meditate for guided for free for 10 days, 
and uh, and be on your way with uh, to, to having a stronger mind. It's very awesome. I actually did so give cool. it a shot before we got on here. And I know. I was like, Julian, what are you doing? Well, the, it's it's, like, it's one of those things where it's like meditation. I mean, it sounds like oh, mm-hmm. meditation, yeah, boring, whatever, overdone. But the the animations they have and the voices, it's all very nice yeah. and it's very clean. Uh, so give that uh, give that a try for sure. And you know, meditation is great, but there's also one more thing that's. <laughs> Awesome is a great night's sleep, and you can't do that on some bad sheets. So check out Bowl and Branch for your sheets and your blankets and your towel and your linen needs because they have it. We, like I, we haven't taken them off. Of we our haven't taken. Well, so the thing is, they, they came to us. They were like, "We want to sponsor the podcast." And I was like, "Really? Like sheets?" And they were like, "Okay, can we send you some to try out, and then you'll see?" And we slept on them one night, and we were like. Why, why is this, how does this exist? How is it even possible to be this comfortable? I am telling you, it is the most comfortable material you could sleep on. Uh, it, it just puts every other sheet you've ever been on to shame. And the great thing about Bowling Branch is they treat their workers more than fairly. So you don't have to feel bad about your sheets when you buy them. You go to Bowling Branch, they ship it to you directly. And you know what? If you try it out 30 days later, you hate it, which you absolutely won't. You can get your full refund, which Bowling Branch stands for stuff like that. So they awesome. are great peeps. Check it out by going to Bowling Branch. And right now, if you enter Jenna Julian, uh, the product code Jenna Julian at checkout at Bowling Branch, you get 20% off your entire order, not just one item. So keep that in mind. Give it a shot. Thank you to our sponsors. And they donate money too. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, they're, they go towards uh, fighting sex trafficking and human yeah. trafficking. It's a very good cause. Uh, just check it out. Bowl and Branch. That's B-O-L-L and Branch. And enter Jenna Julian at checkout for 20% off. Really awesome. Yeah. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyway. 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 Um, I just did the olive oil spray. So you are next. Oh, fuck fuck that so olive oil so spray, sad. dude. Um, my next one was that We Fit game that came out a long time ago. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like they, they sold it to you in like a yoga mat, the video game, and the board. Oh, the board. Oh, God. And it was, was so heavy and like you had to be standing on it. And it was just a miserable thing. And I wound up hating it so much that I just like sold it on Craigslist for I think maybe $5. The kid was like, does it work? And I'm like, yeah. Can just, you please come get it? It just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I actually tried that one time. My cousin had it and we did the ski jump one. Where That's you're the only on fun it. one. But like it's you like fall off of it. It's not it's not very functional. It's like, heavy as fuck. Yeah. I didn't feel like I could ever possibly get a workout on it. Like that. they had a good thing going with the little Wii Why did you have to go and fuck it up with? I don't know, man. Fucking weird. Fucking weird. Weird as shit. On the topic of sprays, uh, I was as you know, as a baseball fan and a baseball kid, I loved hats growing up. I had tons of hats. And so naturally when I started to get allowance and I had some expendable child income, I would go to the hat store a lot Aww. to buy hats. Um, and you know that, you know, at the time they were like 20, 20, 25 bucks, maybe for a brand new fitted new era hat. And it was like the dopest thing. So you'd save up and you'd get a hat. Um, and I remember one time at, at this hat store, it's called lids. They had this spray where it's like next to all the hats, but there's a spray. It's like their protective spray. And one time I was like, what does this even do? And they're like, well, you spray on your hat and basically it never gets dirty. And I'm like, whoa, 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 genie. Like, <laughs> calm down there. That's pretty incredible. So all you're saying is I have to buy this six ninety nine bottle of spray and spray my hat and then it's never dirty. And I'm like, well, I'm always getting dirty. My shit's always getting ruined. So fuck it. I got it and I sprayed it all over my hat and n- literally nothing changed at all. Like, it got Aww, wet. It got dirty. You got dilled. Like I don't understand what I was buying. I feel the same way about protective spray for like shoes and stuff. I mean, maybe I just bought a really crappy one, mm. but like that that thing got dirty. I still have it. I yeah. like have almost all my hats, and I remember I bought it. I was like, "Oh, this is gonna change the game. I'm gonna have the cleanest hats." Nope, nope. not even close. Nope. I feel Not like there's a lot. They just close. like right when you're at the cashier and any sort of like shoe or accessory hat store, yeah. they just try and upsell you. Oh yeah, they're in the perfect spot. So you're feeling dollars. good about your new hat. You want to keep it nice and fresh. They're yeah. like, oh, you better keep it fresh. <sighs> Horrible. Um, my next one is a little bit weird, but I wrote for worst purchases. Let's get weird. Parakeet, mice, dwarf hamsters, and goldfish. Wait, why is a parakeet in there? Well, let me explain. Give me a second. Okay. I'll give you a second. Because I bought all of those things from like a, you know, a Petco or whatever, a yeah, bigger pet store. For sure. And as a young little kid just looking for companionship that wasn't allowed to have a dog, 
Um, I was not prepared for how short all of those animals were going to be alive for. Yeah. And therefore, as an adult, I'm not sure that I could ever put myself through the pain yeah. of having a short-lived pet ever again. I feel you, girl. It's not that I regretted spending the money. It's that I just wish we had more time to be friends. Yeah. But a parakeet. A parakeet was the worst because, you know, goldfish you don't expect to live forever. But and also, you just flush it down the toilet when it's... Like, oh, uh, never. Okay, but you know I what I'm saying? It's burial. a fucking... Fi- okay. <laughs> the bird thing, it's like a... It's more of a real thing. I had a parakeet. I had two parakeets and both I of them know. obviously died. And then there's like there's like a dead bird. And I it's know. Like, and they're really sweet. And yeah. they're, you know, they can be your really good friend. And yeah. I felt that way about mice and hamster. The Not all hamsters. The dwarf hamsters, I yeah. felt, were just... They didn't live very long. Yeah. It was really, really hard as a kid to be like, this is my friend. Now we're friends. And now my friend is dead. <laughs> yeah. But the parakeet really was like yeah. the last one that I could take because they really, they they become your you. little companion and you. they just don't live long They enough. chirp. They sit on your shoulder. They sit with you. They, yeah. like, they're great. I love my parakeets. I know. I did the burial thing too. My mom. My yeah. mom like dug a little grave out back and made a little. Yeah, I'm not sure if I bought because I, I do like birds. I really like them. Although I imagine with the dogs, it would not work out well. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I could, I would have a, a bird. I love them. They're so fun. Like the the bigger like sun conyers, like the ones that love being touched and yeah. held, and like they're really cool. It's sad. But I don't think that I would buy another goldfish, dwarf, dwarf hamster, parakeet. It's yeah. just it's too much for my heart to take. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For sure. I feel you. Go ahead. What's your next one? Um, my next one growing up, it was called, I played a lot of pickup basketball. It was called Never Flat Basketball. You ever mm-hmm. heard of that? No. It's basically a basketball and they they said it would never be flat and they lied. Sounds like it, a challenge. It was flat. Like it got, <laughs> it got flat. I made that basketball. Aww. Like they, they had this new like technology where the layers were made of carbon, whatever, and like they were like it's never flat. They literally titled the product "Never Flat," and I don't remember. Why that. would you call your product that? You're just asking for it. Well, yeah. I'm a- anyone who's it's like calling know. the Titanic th- this. I mean, it, it, but like you ship. said, it's it's almost just like a. <laughs> You're asking for it. Is this a challenge? Like, are you calling this a never flat? Do you really want me to go? Challenge accepted. But I mean, even just normal use didn't stay full. Brutal. Didn't stay. Uh, didn't stay like a full blown up basketball. It, even when it when it was full and you didn't have to blow it up, it didn't feel like a normal. Yeah, it felt wrong. Yeah, it felt wrong. It felt wrong. Now, my next one is from when I was a kid. My brother and I loved slap bracelets, but they used oh, yeah. to make them with the metal inside. Oh god! So we got sna- like slap bracelets, and my brother was all about oh, like doing it as aggressive yeah, as possible. Yeah. And ours were like getting worn down. Yeah. So it used to be a cloth around a metal yeah. bracelet and he did it and his was wearing down he did it so hard that it literally just like slashed his wrist oh my God. Right there. well yeah i mean it's not no but like it, that must look bad like if you see it the doesn't scar. look right yeah <laughs> i don't think he has the scar it was uh, just like a cut no yeah like, even just the cut though it's oh like, my god what dude. happened to your wrist <laughs> it's brutal yeah, that's brutal what was a fun happy slap time now i'm just dark, starting dark, to real just quick way, yeah way too real <laughs> now they're plastic though um, do you have a, do you want to do the rest of yours? I, I skipped a couple. Sure. Um, thunder shirts for dogs, the anxiety, do you know what those oh, are? Oh yeah. And everyone <laughs> like on YouTube was like, oh, if Marble, Kermit's weird and like skittish, get him a thunder shirt. Marbles is, is barking at things he shouldn't bark at. Yeah. Get him a thunder shirt. So I gave in, I got them thunder shirts and it turned them both into just catatonic. Like they didn't move. Like did Marbles, them? Marbles did everything he would normally do he just like you can't stifle that boy when he wants to bark at something yeah. he, he's gonna bark and kermit just stopped moving like he just got lethargic and sad well he does like you know when you put a shirt on him and he just stands there yeah it was like that times 10 because it's meant to squeeze them and oh decrease God. their anxiety that's sc- no he would just stand there scary. like <laughs> how is this helping kermit at all he won't be a dog anymore kermit that's really funny. Um, and the last thing I had was the the game Geometry Wars. I'm not sure that we bought that though. How much it, you it bought like it on the $3 Xbox? Like Three dollars. Julian hates that game. It's, it's the it's like you know when you're teaching a dog a trick, 
You give the fucking dog treats when he does good. Yeah, we this literally game, can't beat level You do three. so good. You get like 400, 500, 1,000 fucking points. And you're like, holy shit, that was stressful. And we did it. And then you're like, oh, you needed 1,100 points to get anything. And you need like a million. Yeah. And you're just like, fuck, dude. It like never rewards you. I know. People were requesting that we play that like on our Twitch stream. And it would have just been, re- like, it would have been like throwing controllers across the room. Yeah, Julian, it yeah. makes Julian so So angry. frustrating. All right. What are some of your best? Some of my best. Uh, okay. As a kid, I, as many of you know, I had five siblings and step siblings. So the house I grew up in was very nuts and it was like high energy. Everyone's playing everything all the time. We got Dance Dance Revolution, the home one where you can unfold the mat and play it on your Xbox. What? And it changed everything. Like we had tournaments. We didn't have to like, like, you know, I imagine for our parents, we were like annoying as fuck and yeah. like high energy. So they were just like, get on DDR, you know, like tire yourselves out. And we did. Like you would be dripping sweat. We would get competitive. It was like we had the best time That's playing so Dance awesome. Dance Revolution in our own like room. Man, yeah. I want to play. I'm sure they still sell it. Dance Dance Revolution, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I've literally only ever played it like at an arcade. Yeah, that's the where they mostly play it. Yeah, wow. You know, that's where they have it and they have the setup. But yeah. I mean, it's not as great because it like the map moves and stuff yeah. and it's really shitty, but it was so much fun, dude. That's awesome. Dance, dance, <laughs> uh, Yeah, that was my first good one. What's your first best purchase? My first best purchase is a dog's like car seat. Incredible. The dog car seat changed my life. Incredible. It's changed my life. I know. Well, they make a lot of like cheap ones or smaller ones. Yeah. I didn't do that. I decided to like spend a little money and get that big one that's like a turns your whole but not your whole but like a lot of your back, back seat row yeah into like a couch essentially for them but it's like but it's raised up really yeah. high so they can see out the windows which yeah. is causing a lot of their anxiety in the car when they can't see out yeah so once they're up high then they can finally relax a little bit see what's going on know where they are yeah. um and you can strap them in there so they can't crawl around the car and they can't you know, run around, do whatever, making me nervous. Cause yeah. I, I've tried like the little, just harnessing them to a seatbelt. Like that never made me yeah. feel safe. Yeah. And they're always still, they, they have enough mobility to get For their sure. legs stuck or like try and get in the back seat. Yeah. This, it just, it is the best thing I've ever gotten. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I've, At least in terms of the dog. I've experienced it. It's yeah. amazing. You strap them in there. You can drive, you can get out of the car. Yeah. Like you don't have to worry about them standing or like, you know, yeah. what, they're just so good. They're just, yeah. No, it's a very, very smart thing. It's very well made. Well, yeah, because I had to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> and those dog stairs, they're from uh, a website called GW Little. Mm. And it is. Not, I'm warning you ahead of time. Don't tell me it's expensive. I know it, they're not cheap. Yeah. The dog seat, the dog car seats and those dog stairs, yeah. the like scalloped cushion stairs. Which we have by the bed. I bought those, I don't know, five years ago, something like that. Like no wear and tear. They're still as beautiful and perfect as yeah. the first day. No, it's well made. You get and what you the pay car for. Seat as it well. pays for itself. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. For sure. What about you? That's the gift that keeps on giving, by the way. True. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, my brother and I played a lot of wiffle ball. And I don't remember how I found out about it, but we discovered this thing called Blitz Ball, which is Blitz with a Z, Blitz Ball. And it was this. You know, wiffle balls have holes in it, but this was like a solid plastic green ball. But it, it was like not hexagonal. It had like a million sides. It was like not circle. It had like, you know, a bunch of flat sides around it. And basically it's, it's thing was that you, there were like, you had to learn how to throw it. It wasn't like, a, and you can throw this thing like really, really fast or like crazy curveballs, or like dipping, ra- rising fastballs, like things you could never do in wiffle ball. Like you could do it. It was still just this plastic thing. That's so my so brother awesome. and I would go, yeah, we would go out front and go to this like garage down the street and we would practice and we would throw these like wild curveballs that were curving around like poles. And it was the funnest, funnest like thing we've ever discovered as kids. That's so awesome. Yeah. It's like a circle boomerang that's less dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And we, I remember this is dumb and it's kind of stupid and anecdotal, but when we were buying a second pack, I was like, Marlon, should we get the smaller or the large pack? Because we were already in love with it. And he said, are we bitches or are we high rollers? Oh my God. <laughs> I can only imagine a couple of kids saying that to each other <laughs> while they're at the cashier laughing. sporting goods oh store. And like these fucking kids, man. Blitz balls. I don't even know if they exist anymore, but that's really cool. Yeah, I've really never fun. even heard of that or seen one. Yeah, that sounds fun. It was fun. Um, my next one was Fit Flops. 
Oh, you love your fit flops. Yeah. Well, cause I love flip flops. Yeah. Um, but so what is a fit flop? It's just a, it's a company, it's a brand. But when I found them because I have bad like arches in my feet, mm-hmm. so I need good support and flip flops are just terrible for your feet as are like ballet flats, even some of the like boots and stuff I wear, like if like I Converse wear, too, yeah. if I wear them for two, I just can't yeah. wear those flat fucking shoes. They're yeah. not good for my feet. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking around on the internet. I found fit flops and they built the sole of it like a sneaker. So when you're wearing it, it feels like a, like a really supportive. I've seen sneaker. it. It's very awesome. I've, you know, bought two pairs in the last six years and I wear them every summer and all the time. I've only gone through two of them. They last a long time and they're like, you can wear them all day. So when it's like hot and you're walking around yeah. doing like tourist stuff or whatever at the beach and you can not have to worry about your feet hurting. Yeah. Those things changed my life for sure. I got my mom on them too. That's true. Yeah. yeah my mom has, they're them. great. Yeah. For those you know people who need that do support. Do they make boy flip fit I'm sure they do. They're so comfortable. They can't not. Yeah. They're so comfortable. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I might've talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, but again, it's baseball related. Um, there was this mask and it was, there was, there's two types of masks as a catcher. There's a hockey mask that goes over your whole head, and there's the two-piece mask where you wear the backwards sh- hat shell and you put the mask over the top. And I was always obsessed with the two-piece because I just liked it better, even though it was always illegal in high school and shit, <laughs> but I still loved it. And so I bought one, and I loved it, and it was the best. I played it in all my scout ball leagues and everything, and it was just lighter. I just loved it. And then I, you know, I got enamored by this one that Nike made, but only gave to professional catchers. Like Jorge Posada had it. I remember, um, Joe Maurer had it like they, it was this titanium version of that, which it was like feather light, but it was made as way stronger than all the other masks. So it was like, it was naturally, it was the thing I needed to get because it was impossible to get. You could not get one. <laughs> like you couldn't buy one ever. Um, you still can't. Anyway, I was on, I, I had scoured the internet through Cra- Craigslist and eBay for one of those, literally scoured the internet. Um, and I, on, I was on Craigslist one day and I found a mask and I was like, this cannot be real. I will buy this. What is the price? And he was like, oh, you know, I'll give you the whole set of gear for, which was the brand new Nike gear. I was like, oh fuck, for like 200 bucks or whatever. So I like forked over the cash and I bought it and it was like the best. Thing. I still have it. It's upstairs. I it was the best did. thing I've ever bought gear wise in baseball. Um, you love that thing. You're never getting rid of it. Never. Turns out the guy I bought it from was a college catcher at the University of Michigan and they were sponsored by Nike that year. So, so they got cool. masks. Yeah. It was so cool. So cool. I had umpires, catchers, every single game I wore it and asking me where I got yeah. it. Sorry, bro. It's the only one. <laughs> yeah. I know you love that fucking thing. It's so sick. Yeah, it's pretty Mine cool. was, okay, my next one was sports related also. Mm. So I was a pitcher in college in softball and I was burning through my cleats all the time because in softball you drag your back toe on the dirt. As a pitcher. Yeah, yeah like yeah. on an angle. So basically where your big toe is, that part of your cleat just wears all the way down. Yeah. And even when we would uh, throw in the morning and stuff in the gym, um, the m- part of my sneaker would always just yeah, like, yeah. basically rub off. And so I didn't know until I got... I think in high school was when I first found one, but it was a shitty one, but I found the great ones in college. It's called, I think it's called like a toe rubber. Tough tough toe. Tough toe? Tough toe. toe. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Changed my life. Changed my life forever and ever and ever. Like you just put it on your cleat on the front of it and it's just this big giant piece of rubber, which makes it weird when you're doing everything else, but it makes it so that you don't just burn through your cleats. Yeah. And it was like the saved me so much money. Yeah. It was the best thing. I remember those. And also in speaking of sport things, when I was in uh, high school, when I was a diver, um, and when I first started, I didn't have what they call like a chamois towel. So you you like when you're practicing, when you're doing yeah. anything, you're literally just getting in the pool, getting out of the pool, yeah. getting in the pool, getting out of the pool, and you're fucking freezing all the time. Yeah. Which is why in like you know fancy places they have like hot tubs, or you can go yeah, stand yeah. in the shower. Like in the whatever. Olympics, they're all sitting in the hot tub. Yeah, you're just wet yeah, for hours, for sure. and it's fucking cold. Um, but there's this thing called the chamois towel, which is like a little microfiber towel, towel, basically. And you dry every part of your body off and you're like a lot less cold and just much more ready to do things. Yeah. And once I got one of those, it changed my it. life was forever That's changed. That's awesome. Because when I first started, I was like, I don't, I don't think this is for me. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of cold and wet. I yeah. want to go home. That's awesome. I think it was dope. Yeah. Because then you squeeze it out. It's all dry again. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. That's great. What's your next one? I think, I mean, that's. I could say more, but eh, 
I have a couple more. I rode my bike in college. Oh, yeah, you love your bike. I bought it off eBay, and it literally got me everywhere, which was nice. Um, I'll, I'll tell you another one. There's a, It was a fitness-related one I still use today. What is it? It's called Fat Grips. Oh, you love Fat Grips. This is basically a giant rubber sphere that you, you can open it up and, like, wrap it around a weight, like a dumbbell or a barbell on two on each, one on each side. And basically, you're, like, you're gripping a very thick material instead of a small bar. So while you're gripping it, whatever you're doing, you're doing curls, you know, you're doing deadlifts or deadlifts or whatever, whatever it is you're doing, as long as you're gripping a weight, you're working your grip and your forearms. So you're simultaneously getting a forearm workout throughout the, and it's, it's the only fitness tool like I've used for years and years and years. It's amazing. Well, I think your forearm strength went up immensely once you started using them because yeah. then all of a sudden you could deadlift. Fun fact. In base in baseball in college, there was like you know your fitness like fucking you had your boot camp and then you test at the end for like pull ups. You test the beginning and test at the end. You're at forty, your pull ups, all that stuff. So on pull ups, I fucking hit thirty two pull ups in a row. Yeah. In the test because I had been doing pull ups with fat grips. So once I gripped the regular thing, I was like, oh, this is chill. Yeah. I mean, I weighed one hundred sixty pounds, but still, you know, thirty like it was. It was crazy. And I remember like it gets your forms all vascular, vascular. <laughs> well, Julian will not tell you about fat grips. So oh, yeah. There's a there, downside. There was one time when Julian overused his fat grips <laughs> and he made me massage all of the knots out of his forearms and was – that was probably – the most pain I've ever seen like, you in my yeah, life. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Like you were you were rubbing basically all these knots out of my forearm with coconut oil, like getting in there, and I was like crying. He it was like actually so bad. crying. Yeah. So you know, you pay the price for beauty, strength. That is a really genius product, though. It's pretty great. My next one was actually coconut oil. It's amazing. <laughs> Perfect. Um, makeup wipes. I, fucking. I don't know what I did before makeup wipes existed. Yeah. <laughs> Daily contacts changed my life. Chromecast changed my Chromecast life. Chromecast is pretty fucking crazy. Chromecast changed my life so that you can watch like YouTube videos or whatever on your TV, which is Chromecast amazing. is a game changer, absolutely. Um, and also in my last, I'll make this my last. Yes, let's do it. Um, the Turby towel, which I thought was like a gimmicky, stupid, didn't want it. Those little hair towels that I have that you put over your wet yeah, hair yeah. and then you. It just, I use yours. I know. Oh, I used to. I yeah. love them. It's I'm, I'm never going back to using a towel They're for my incredible. hair. And uh, the wet brush, which is like a $10 stupid brush, but it's essentially made the same as like uh, if you had hair extensions. It's like a really gentle brush that you can uh, use on your wet hair uh, or any hair, yeah. but it like doesn't tangle. Like it doesn't really rip nice. or hurt your hair. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. And I don't know what I did before I spent that $10. Guys, take notes here. Best and worst, worst purchases we've ever made or that we can think of. Yeah, that we could think of. Yeah, I feel like there are more. I'm sure there's so many more. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a part two sometime when we have a better list or yeah. another list at least, or maybe a combined yeah. purchase list. Yeah. Mine just had a lot of beauty. sad beauty products. Mine had a lot of weird baseball stuff. So. I have so many sad beauty products. Like some of well, them. Well, you have just a lot of beauty products. Just some of them are bound to be sad. Not every beauty product can be happy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but you could be happy right now if you start trading with Headspace. Yeah. Get the app, check it out, and start doing guided meditation. Do the take 10, 10 days of free meditation, and see how you like it. Uh, headspace.com slash Jetta Julian. Uh, I would highly recommend giving it a try. And Bowling Branch, give those sheets a try for sure. Uh, you get 20% off your order at Bowl and Branch. That's B O L L and Branch.com and enter Jenna Julian at checkout. Uh, 30 day return policy guarantee. If you don't like it, you send it back. Thank you to our sponsors. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, and like we said before, let us know in the comments what you guys have bought. Your worst purchases. Yeah, because there are always funny stories with like. The I know, worst and purchases. I feel like seeing the comments is really just going to like jog my memory of yeah, everything. Yeah, hundred percent, it is that so. you hate. Because so, I, I know that there's been things that I bought that like physically. Me too. Made like me I, angry. I know like, that there's so like angry. stories that I look like an absolute idiot. I almost wanted to text my mom because I bet she knows. Yeah. But yeah. Let us know. Um, thank you guys for hanging out, listening, and watching. We'll see you guys yeah. next week in 2016. In 2016. Wow. That's crazy. I know, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the new year. Bye, guys. Bye.